Hey everybody, welcome to Intentional Academy Live, episode 20. That's right, we've been doing this for 20 hours now. I'm Tony Farrar, joined by Justin Thomas to help you squeeze every last drop of value out of your education. We're here to show you how to win through the power of intentional learning. No matter where you are in life, we're here to help you manage your time, get control of your money, and launch your dream career. And hi, Justin. Hey, somebody's been watching the past broadcasts of the transition. What's that? <laughs> That's the transition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so here I am, a little lonely today. Nicole uh, couldn't make it, but she sends her best regards. Um, special episode tonight. We are coming up on exams. Today was the official study day the school that I teach at. Uh, so we're going to talk about some study tips for exams. But before we do that, I've got some updates for last week that I'm really excited about. Last week, uh, we talked about tips for finding internships right now for this summer. And we said, it's not too late. And we challenged people to tell us their story. Uh, and then we promised that we would spread it. And so I've got one. We had somebody that took what we said last week and put it into practice and two days later came into my office to tell the story about how they had landed an internship. And so we're going to recap it real quick, but they added a really cool thing. Uh, their strategy for getting somebody on the phone, Justin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a job that was a couple hours away, but they had a buddy that lived in the area literally sent their buddy over to corporate headquarters for this place they wanted to work and had him walk into the lobby and they couldn't get past security to like really talk to anybody but there was a book that was the corporate directory so buddy's just snapping pictures flipping pages getting everybody in the whole company's phone number next thing you know this student who was trying to get the internship uh, just going down the list, calling everybody. Got some HR people on the phone. They didn't do much. Got some engineers on the phone, maybe a little bit of traction here and there, but weren't really sure. Got the CEO on the phone and had a little conversation with them and eventually got far enough down the list that they found the person who I think now is going to be their boss and ended up having a couple minute conversation with them. And then they said, wait a minute, I think your name sounds familiar. Did, did you apply? Well, yeah, I did. Hey, let us call you back in a minute. And the next thing you know, phone interview that same day. Next day, they brought him on for a in-person interview. And while they were there giving him the tour, they went ahead and offered him the internship for the summer. And so this is a person who had, you know, applied online, done all of the standard up your load your resume and hope something happens stuff had applied to over 60 jobs, 60 different internships, and didn't get anywhere. And so uh, anyways, that's really exciting. Congrats to that person. That's l the literal brute force hacker method <laughs> of getting a job. It, right? Send a spy. <laughs> you add that to the list, right? I mean, Just literally go down the list of people, one by one by one, until somebody here needs me to work for them. <laughs> In case you're wondering, that's called hustle. I just, yeah, anyways, <laughs> good job, right? So what is it that we told everybody to do? First off, you can go watch the full video from last week. Uh, we're on YouTube, and the video is also preserved here on Facebook, so you can catch us either place. Uh, and you can hit my blog. It's the second post on there right now. So if you just go to TonyFerrar.com, you can click on the blog button and, and read what we talked about. But basically, we gave you four tips right now on how to land yourself an internship for this summer and thought we'd recap them for you just in case you didn't get a chance last week or if you want to have them distilled a little bit so i guess i'll do those really quick for you here the first one we said was don't forget the long game i know you're in a hurry but the most important thing you can do is focus on building your network the world is filled with people who love to upload online applications but what you really need as evidenced by the person who just landed this job, is to talk to a human being and start forming a relationship. And so 
we talked about a tactic that I used on LinkedIn for that, where we um, help you find people to connect to and um, expand your network very quickly. Jump into conversations. Your goal there is to get yourself to be known as a member of this community already. And it turns out it's not very hard to do. So spend a little time every day building your network. The second thing we talked about was to stop going after all these big names where you're in the most consp- competitive space possible. And instead, go fishing where the fish are. Apply to all the places that nobody's heard of that are just dying to fill their internship slots. It turns out you're more likely to end up at a small company, 550, 500 employees, where you will find uh, lots of opportunity to actually do the thing that you're trying to intern in. Yep, be important quicker. Yes. People in these places tend to wear lots of hats, and so you'll see a variety of roles. Get your ch- get a chance to really get your hands dirty doing something important. One of the little hacks that we had for that was to start searching for subcontractors, uh, especially government grants, things like that. They're posted, they're public, but these are uh, really short, uh, really uh, mostly small companies that nobody's heard of, but are doing really interesting work. Uh, number three, third thing is stop just applying online and thinking it's going to work. Nowadays, it's so easy that you can just assume everybody's applied to every job. 10,000 applications actually isn't weird. And so instead, what we want you to do is focus on building relationships, have conversations with people, get in touch. One method might be sending your buddy and hacking into the (laughs) corporate directory, but another option is to just use good old email. And so we gave a three-step process of email somebody to introduce yourself. A couple of days later, send another email with your resume and cover letter. A couple of days after that, give them a call. Your whole goal is to get your name in their brain and then get that person on the phone long enough for you to show them who you are. And finally, regardless of whether you land a position or not, the last thing we said was give yourself an internship. The best thing that you can possibly do is work for free until somebody's willing to pay you to work for them. And so this is all about pick a project in your field and go ahead and get busy doing it. Mm-hmm. Build a portfolio. Absolutely. This used to be a thing that you know certain majors had to do it, right? But I think all majors should be. What you want to do is be building a track record of having done something good, and also a track record that you can tell of stories that you can tell. Places where things worked the way you thought they would, places where they didn't, and what you learned from that, places where you grew. So those are the four big things we talked about last week. You can watch that full episode, uh, Facebook or YouTube. If you just search for Intentional Academy, um, we're the top thing that will show up on YouTube there. So real quick, one more time, that was don't forget the long game. Fish where the fish are. Stop applying online. And give yourself an internship. Boom. What do you think, Justin? That's all four. And I'm telling you right now, not only was that student successful, but that's at least the third iteration of this process that has worked. First being Tony, second being me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So get hyped. And again, if this, when this works for you, send us your story and we'll tell that too. Uh, I am really excited just to tease you here a little bit. Um, I met with that student before and after this process and we got it on audio. So once we get the podcast going, that'll be an episode that shows up at some point. So stay hyped. Not yet. Justin. Yes, sir. Do you remember how long many years ago when we uh, were undergrads, this was the week that we were studying for exams yeah I, I'll, I'll i'll throw the quotes up for me <laughs> <laughs> the quotes yeah i i actually was never a very good studier so if i didn't do the work during the semester when it came down to it there was no chance i was sitting for two three eight hours focused on either learning or relearning concepts so it, i would sit down Hit the hit the uh, hit the hot spots 
make sure I had a had a handle of it and you know, I, I, I wasn't gonna stress myself over it. I couldn't do it. There was no way. Did it work for you? Absolutely. I graduated and I'm doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you think was different? Different how? I don't know. Uh, the questions that we got that I want to answer today are all about like cramming and having bad memory and trying to relearn things you already learned. Uh, how do I feel you feel like you I feel like the, uh, the, the sleeping thing? I guarantee as a college student, you're not getting enough sleep. So mm. if the option are is to stay up even more hours or catch some shut eye and rest your brain. It's the brain, but. A lot of times your memory things, it can be uh, anxiety. So you may need to learn ways to just calm your nerves. And it's not necessarily you forgot it. You just are kind of freaking out. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to jump too far down your steps here, but. Oh, this is, hey, yeah, <laughs> this is ideas, bro. Don't worry about it. Um, so the question that, that we got was, wait, you're supposed to read the questions. You're the producer. All right. Well. Should I stay up late studying or sleep and get well rested? How about that? Justin says, don't stay up late. Get some sleep. Which I didn't is say don't stay up late, but just don't, you know, marathon sessions do you zero good. Right. I think that what's really happening is that most people call studying, uh, most people call learning studying. They're not actually studying when they're getting ready for tests. They're learning material for the first time because when they had the homework assignment or whatever it is they were working on, they were, uh, you know, busy, distracted, just trying to get it done, turn it in so you could move on and go on to the next more interesting thing. Using and so the solution manual to make sure you got 100 on the homework in there. And so it's like. All semester long, people are just playing whack-a-mole trying to get the homework done and assignments turned in rather than actually learning it then. So when it comes time to sit down and have to perform on something like an exam, you call it studying, but what you're really doing is trying to learn it for the first time. So I don't know. At first, I feel like this might not be the most helpful thing to say to somebody who's stressed about exams this week, but there's a reason semesters are 14 weeks long. And Tony, how do you design your out of uh, out of classroom work, like time wise? Me? Yes. Uh, I follow the standard, which, believe it or not, is written in many faculty handbooks at many universities, and that is that you are supposed to spend three hours per credit per week outside of class. So, if you're taking a typical three credit course. That's a nine hour job doing homework. But what happens if I finish the homework early? Uh, crack open a book. <laughs> Cement those, you know, key items that were yes. taught that week. You know, make sure you got them down so you can build on it. Yes. Uh, and a tip coming in from the Instagram feed, by the way, you can also watch me live there. It's a little bit less flattering angle, but we're there. Uh, is to put your phone away when you're trying to study, unless, of course, the material's on there. <laughs> uh, it's so hard. You know, I, I read a book one time that talked about distractions and interruptions, and it said that the typical interruption to get back where you were mentally is a 15 to 20 minute process. And so you're in the middle of some great idea, and then ding, off goes a notification. Yeah, you just cost yourself 20 minutes. And so it takes longer, but more often what happens is people run out of time. And so they just end up going shallower, shall, shallower, less, uh, less deep, less shallow, <laughs> less deep uh, than they meant to. Is that a word? Shallower, more, more shallow, more shallow, less deep. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we're good. <laughs> end up skimming. Ooh, there's a different analogy. Uh, now, it might be too late for you to go back in time because I haven't built my time machine yet. So the tip right now while you're sitting down to prep for your exams is to realize that there's a difference between studying and learning for the first time. And as you go through your notes, what you should do is right now, like days before your first exam, maybe even a week before, 
read through everything and mark the things that you already learned and just need to refresh on compared to the things that you never got the first time so that you can focus on the ones you didn't get the first time. Start there, then go study the stuff you already got. And a lot of times, the fastest way to do that is to just wander right in and get some help. Go ask a prof for the help. Ask a TA, find a friend, find somebody who did get that topic and start there rather than trying to just bang your head against it and waste a whole bunch of time. And then now you're tired and feel like the only way you're going to do this is stay up late and cram. You know, there is one good use for your phone potentially while during your study session. All right. Stopwatch. Set your timers. Yes. Like oh, man. every 45 yeah. or 50 minutes, you take a 10 minute break. Absolutely. A lot of people, I think there's a thing called the Pomodoro technique that really made this popular, but it's pick a pick an interval that works well for you. And at the end of that interval, go do something else for 10 minutes. So a lot of people like the 50 minutes on 10 minute break kind of thing. Other people, uh, myself, I liked working 20 minutes. 25 minutes and then taking a five minute break. And so I work 25 minutes. And during that time, I'm laser focused. Don't talk to me. Don't distract me. I don't care about my notification. I dialed in. But then when the alarm goes off, I stood up and I walked outside and I saw the sunlight for a couple minutes. And then I come back in and, and repeat. And I tried to go through four or five hours a day of that during study time. And it's amazing how much deeper I get. Uh, when I know that a break's coming, so I can kind of unclench for a minute. Yep. Come on, man. Thanks for reminding me. Well, yeah. I mean, there's there's just like you said, there's a reason why the semester is so long. There's a reason why, you know, the the way professors, like we said, they they structure their classes and their outside outside work. You shouldn't be teaching yourself concepts at the end of the semester. It right. happens. We know it happens, but you know, working on these techniques really does help you in the long run. Absolutely. So focus in the future on that, but at least for this semester, differentiate so that you know what parts you already got and which parts you don't, and then focus on the ones you didn't. And what you'll see is that you got a shorter list than you thought you did. All right. Second one isn't really written in the form of a question. How do you read dot, dot, dots, Justin? Give that a try. <laughs> Just long pause. No, just, <laughs> my problem is that I feel like I'm constantly relearning. And then you just sort of wide-eyed and get sort of flustered. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I have the worst memory. And so kind of tying into the last one a little bit, a lot of times I will forget things and then I feel like I'm relearning them. And that can be very frustrating, especially in, for lack of a better word, like fact classes where you've got to regurgitate a specific, more or less piece of trivia. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, by the way, dude. I'm like really great at trivia up to a certain point. But if it was something I learned in class, it's just in one ear and out the other. I can't relate to that. But what I can relate to is my reading comprehension is terrible. So if it's a class that literally is sit down and read the textbook and then we'll come in and we'll have a discussion about it, it's going right. to be rough. But if it's a class where I can basically have the math crutch and work on topics and things like that and then go back into the textbook and just read that section real quick to refresh, mm -hmm. that helped a lot. Already kind of knowing what I was about to read uh, helped a ton. Yeah, I, I think what you're picking at here is what I wanted to talk about, which is that when you are going through the learning part, instead of just trying to memorize this one thing that works in this one situation, focus on the mindset. So I'm engineering prof. I'll start there. I don't memorize engineering equations. There's not like an airplane equation and an air conditioning equation and a car equation. What I do is I worked on perfecting my process that I could take and solve 
any system. And I've, after years of practice, I've got three steps. I use the same three steps every time I'm faced with a new situation, every single time, the same three steps. Uh, my sister is an artist. She uh, does glass and she does the same thing, completely different process. She spent a while honing hers as well. But the problem that this solves is that a lot of times when you see this new concept, you can't really separate the forest from the trees. There's some core ideas and then there's these other things that are just, you know, the, the nitty gritty nuances of a specific circumstance. And so I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to encourage here is rather than trying to catch all of those little drops, focus on getting a mindset. I try to think like an engineer so that when I'm faced with an engineering problem, it doesn't really matter what the nuances are. I'm just going to work through them. You know, maybe you're a history major. Stop trying to memor just memorize names and dates and actually think about these things like a historian would. And I'll bet what happens is you start to put things in context and in a framework where you can, first off, remember that stuff, but more importantly, do something with them, right? Same deal with math majors, psych major, it doesn't matter. Stop trying to memorize tricks. Stop trying to memorize cases. Start trying to think like a mathematician would or like a psychologist would. And so, you know, I think when you do that, you, you rewire your brain a little bit to, you know, think things through, put things in bins and make sense of it all. And I guess this is what you could do if you finish your homework early on one of those nine day, nine hour weeks, right, man? Mm -hmm. Where it's like spend a little time trying to understand look for the high level pattern maybe or put things in categories or maybe go back to an old assignment and write down the process you followed that worked that got you through that and then see if that same process could work in a new place what you just said is pretty much in, in in my realm, it's a it's a system of systems. So <laughs> you you your your overall system is your study method. We're talking about your your nine hours a week for a, a three credit class. So you you sit down, you've perfected how you learn outside of class, and then you start honing the concepts that you're supposed to be learning within that class, and start finding that method of solving that problem or remembering that key fact. Right. Or, you know, deciphering what some artist was trying to depict or, you know. Do you feel like that takes longer? I feel like you, you it, it, any, just like anything, you have to have an initial investment. So in the beginning, it's going to be completely different it's going to be something that more than likely you've never done before it's going to be a, a complete attitude adjustment like dieting or uh you know quitting quitting some bad habit or things like that it's going to take ex extreme dedication and then it's just going to feel like the norm you know eventually mm -hmm. you're just going to just do it and you're not even going to realize you're doing it so yeah yeah i think that's probably a really good way to put it. You know, once you adopt a new mindset, it becomes so easy to think about from that frame that, uh, you know, amazing things start happening. Like you actually do remember the nuanced details, right? You've, and so it, it's weird because I actually do know which equation I would use if I ran into an air conditioner right now, but it's not because I sat down and practiced air conditioners for seven years, but now that things make sense in my mind, I can see a little bit of a difference from one to the other, and I know what I need to do there. So before we started talking about this, I mentioned, you know, anxiety and how that could affect your memory. Mm -hmm. the, the, what we're talking about is literally ways of pulling nodes of stress out of your life. And so mm. the more stress you can remove out of your life, the easier things will be to remember, the easier it will be for you to get your work done. Um, anything you can do to remove chaos and get in game structure is going to help you in the long run. I think that's a, that's a really good point, man. When you are 
frazzled and running from idea to idea. It's so hard to see up from down. You know, it's so hard to differentiate one thing. Everything just borders together. And so if you can find ways to reduce that anxiety, reduce that stress, like focusing on big pictures, like getting good rest, taking effective breaks where you actually turn off for a little while, uh, I think those will go a really long way. Properly incorporating other other lifestyle events into your life too. You, you know, you don't take away from your schoolwork, but you cannot also you, you know there's there's a swing where you you spend too much time doing school and not enough time focusing on yourself. Absolutely, absolutely, man. And 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 that's you know one of the things for me, especially in grad school where things got super stressful, I had to find a activity that was so engaging that I couldn't think about something else while I was doing it. Right. For me, that was rock climbing, but what it, what it is, is there's so much going on when you're doing something like that or playing a sport with your friends or whatever it is that you can't think about all that other stuff. And for me, that was really therapeutic because it gave an opportunity to shut down for a little bit. And then, Strangely enough, when I went back to the material that was giving me a hard time, uh, I had so much more clarity that I was able to figure it out in much less time. And so as weird as it sounds, I think even even during big study phases like exams and things like that, uh, I think you still need to go have some fun. A lot of universities are realizing the utility in that too. I believe, I think I saw... Virginia Tech last year had like uh, uh, you go you could go to the uh, student center and they had dogs and you could just go play yeah. with dogs. Like if you didn't have a dog, you just go like play with puppies at the student center yep. during yep. during uh, exam week. Oh yeah, and if they won't bring them to you, you could always go to a pet store. Just don't come home with one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or play a sport or um, see a good movie. For me, I just I spent so much time in my room in my apartment studying that it was literally if I wasn't in my room and a lot of times not in my apartment, just go across the street to a buddy's place, just not be where I equated, you know, learning. Yep. And so if you've got that space, that's definitely a place to step out of. That's why for me, I had to get to a point where I just stopped doing homework at home. I'd go to a lounge, I'd go to a coffee shop, I'd go somewhere else. But when, when I was home, that was relaxation time. I needed to be able to turn off my brain and just chill out a little bit. Exactly. I don't think I have anything else to add to that. <laughs> right? Just mellow out. Everything's going to be okay. Long term, if you find yourself freaking out every year during exams, try and put in a little bit more time during the semester to learn it the first time so that you don't have to switch from refreshing and studying to learning for the first time because it's the learning process that takes a while not the studying process oh that's what i was going to ask you tony there there's one thing that we've talked about before and it's gpa not being the the be all and the end all and i don't know if you can tell us but you gave the the, the story of that student you know is yeah. he like is he the 4-0 greatest student you've ever had in your life or is he more of a you know he gets it done but you know it's might not be uh, three three two part part uh option b there definitely the he was uh right around the 3 mark there you go yep so but i think he really doubled down on what we talked about about focusing on the connection focusing on forming a relationship and what happens when you apply a little hustle is that people want to talk to you mm -hmm. want to know more about you and suddenly you become really interesting and by the way oh, little bit, it's okay go ahead i was just going to say one of the things i've learned from from industry it seems is a lot of times having an undergraduate degree pretty much just proves that you have the ability to learn mm -hmm. and that you know making your connections and ensuring that you're a good fit to that 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 position in that company is means a lot more to them than somebody who is the perfect student Right. Because more than likely, you're going to learn most of what you do on the job. 
Wow, it's like you just tied the two halves of this show together. First, we talked about finding jobs. Then we talked about studying. And now here it all is, right? Perfect that process of learning how to learn. And it makes you not only do well at your exams, but also really hireable. <laughs> you plan that? No, but I'm just, you know, you spend 70 hours stuck in your room to get a, a 3.7 or you've gone out and you've made personal connections and you've got volunteering at the shelter, the, the animal shelter, and you've got, you know, involvement in your community and you got like a three, two, you know, like you sacrifice a little time studying to better yourself and better your, your community. And now you just, you're an overall better person right. and you just look, you're just more hireable. I don't know. This. Yeah. You gotta be careful there. Cause there are still the, the places that filter a little differently, right? And you know, if you're looking at grad school, some of those places they're gonna they're gonna evaluate you differently. Well, you're so a professional I'm talking student. about a very specific place that you can go here that looks like, um, you know, looks like a place that is responsive to a person who's who's doing this. Well, grad school is a little different because at that point you're trying to prove to, that you want to be a professional student, right? So you might want to look like a really good student <laughs> <laughs> which by the way brings us all together that you know as we work man we've been doing this a little while now like a year a year and a half two years of intentional academy and we're constantly trying to clarify what it is exactly that we do and i think the new clearest way i can say it is that we're helping students build their personal brand and if that sounds like something you've never heard of before, let me unpack it for you really quick. What we do is we help you develop a persona that is authentic to you, that you can show uh, and become a part of the community, especially the professional community, that you really want to be a part of. And so if you want to be a grad student, then this is the persona of a grad student. And if you want to be an engineer or a, um, you know, a historian or whatever your field is, what we're talking about is how you can portray yourself and then how you can use the things that we're doing with time and, and all of that. What that really is doing is helping you focus on the right things to become the person that you want to be. Because one of, one of the most important concepts I think that we could relate here is you're not static. I'm a different person than I was 10 years ago and certainly a different person than I was 20 years ago. And while a lot of my values are the same, uh, a lot of what I think and a lot of my approach to life has changed. And one of the things that I'm really happy about is that I kind of looked ahead and saw people, right? Maybe an easy way to say it is just role models, people you look up to, and said, I want to be somewhat like that. How can I become that? And the answer is studying certain things, reading certain things, maybe focusing your attention on uh, some ideas more than others. And anyways, that was a long spiel. <laughs> But I guess what I'm trying to say is the reason that this trick, I guess, if you want to call it for landing internships works, the reason the stuff that we're talking about works is that we help people figure out how to be themselves, find places that want people like them, and then actually connect them in a way that they get noticed. How about that? Yeah, that's, that's 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 pretty much what it is. You know how long it took us to kind of circle the wagons. <laughs> crazy, it's crazy. So stay tuned because I guess that means we're going to finally be able to start clarifying um, some of the things that we're putting together. And the point here is to help you build that brand and show people who who you are, right? Circling back a little bit to something we talked about last week, I think that people, when you find yourself kind of desperate and chasing after an internship or chasing after that job that you think you want, um, you're trying so hard to make that sale 
that you just want to portray yourself as the right person for the job, the fit, rather than trying to find a place you actually do fit. And I think a lot of people take a rejection or some, you know, them choosing not to hire them as a failure rather than as a measurement that this is a place I don't fit. I don't think I want to go there. Or if you really do want to be there, then you know what you need to adjust to become that fit. I'm, try, I'm trying to find something to no. add. I no, it's, it's cool. <laughs> this is the part where Nicole would like have something brilliant to tell us, but she couldn't make it tonight. So she says hi, but uh, the awkward silences are going to abound. Um, I could rattle on forever. A couple people on Instagram saying, hey, you guys have any questions? What are you doing to study? Let's see if anybody answers here. See, so, yeah, that this is this is the next step right so the best way for us to help you is for you to tell us what you need help with <laughs> Ooh, all right here we go how do you go from cramming and selective learning to a more motivated mindset well i think that's where it starts the mindset change the mindset change itself okay so I, I forget what the what the saying is or the statistic is, but um, it, it's 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 habit forming. It's doing re things repetitively until it becomes second nature. So you go from you know sporadic learning and 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 all over the place to it literally changing your mindset. If it's an, if it hasn't worked before, it's not going to work now. So hmm. change the mindset, change your approach. That's right. that's the first step. Oh man, that's a good point. I think kind of going along with that too is being careful that uh, just because something seems to work for somebody else, um, maybe don't copy their tactics. Um, Industry does this. Yeah. With things like, you know, throw around buzzwords like Six Sigma and stuff like that, where mm. the concept sounds great but they don't understand how to mold it to their, their means. And they just sort of shoehorn it in and it just right. doesn't work. Yeah. You know, and, and so if one person works well with flashcards, that doesn't mean you should, you know, and then maybe, maybe working on, um, you know, just to try really hard to address this question right now, the motivation side of it for me comes from imagining how I'm going to use this new thing I'm trying to figure out in the future. Right. What am I going to do that makes a difference? What am I going to do that matters? How can I uh, map this concept that I'm being taught into something that I care about in the future uh, that makes it worth it? Right. I don't like exercising. There is absolutely nothing fun to me about going to the gym. About repetitive motion. Right. It's just, yeah, there's, there's no fun involved. Uh, but I really do like going on big strenuous hikes and rock climbing and things like that. And it's enough for me to think about my next trip, to think about that thing that I'm going to be able to be, to do if I train my body to actually be capable of doing it. And I approach learning the exact same way. Think about what it is that this is going to enable me to do. And I let that kind of guide me that I'm not in, you know, calculus class. I'm in change the world class part one. <laughs> and for me, for me, that really drives me. Man, yeah, great, I, I kind of wish that. I was taught some of these concepts going into college because literally one of my first classes was here, a higher, here's a higher level math class. Go teach it to yourself. You have quizzes every week. No oh, teacher. That was hard. <laughs> and you know, it was just it, not have, you know, the high school didn't really didn't take that much effort for me. I'm, I'm not, that's not a horn tooting thing. That's just a, it didn't prepare me as well as it should have. Mm -hmm. So going in and just saying, well, there you go, go learn. How? I think I think a lot of people face that too, and 
as somebody who now teaches a class that is largely reliant on you going and learning it yourself, all I can say is that the, the motivation part of it is everybody's responsibility. You know, the faculty need to, to map this thing to something that matters for you, but then you have to let yourself be led there too. Mm -hmm. right? it's, it's well, kind of and a, one of the things that your class does that some of the other ones don't is you place an emphasis on teamwork. And a lot of times having that person, I mean, we've said it before, Tony and I took literally every class together for the last like three and a half years of school mm -hmm. and having that person saying, okay, we're going to sit down and we're going to do this homework, you know, or, you know, you know, you got this or, Hey, did you understand that? Can you, you know, run this by me? Things like that. Having that, that person helped a lot. Yeah. And so by the way, motivation part number two for me is I find it very exciting and motivating to show somebody else something that they don't understand already. And so another tip to getting motivated and moving from cramming and just trying to fill in the gaps to study for a test versus really internalize something is to find somebody who needs help and start helping them in the class you're in already in classes in the past and what it does it gives you an opportunity to frame it well enough that you can explain it to somebody else. But it also gives you uh, that extra jolt of having a purpose that's a little bigger than yourself. You know, I, I, I think that, I think the reason you and I are still so close is largely because we argued about how fluids work. Oh my goodness. You know, and every other class too, but you know, <laughs> but I think there's a lot to that, that, you know, it, it elevated it from just being homework to being, uh, you know, the pursuit of something important, even if we didn't know exactly what it was. Man, yeah, that's a cool question. That was a good question. Thanks for that one. Man, having real questions and not have to search for them on Reddit is pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, here we are. We do this every week. Um, I think we should probably wrap up. It's getting close to the end. If anybody has any other questions over there on Instagram, here's your last chance for now. Uh, if not, catch you if next not, time. I was going to say, if not, that's uh, ammo for the next week. Hey -oh. Yeah, so when we check in next week, uh, we will be days away from graduation and right in the thick of exams. So we'll try and provide a little bit of relief there. Um, a couple more tactics, recovery, things like that. But also just, you know, let's hang out and relax a little bit. So, Justin, you good? I'm great. Cool. Let me just say thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Instagram, what's up? Also uh, on Facebook. If you tuned in late and want to see the rest of it, uh, you can hop over to Facebook or um, YouTube. Intentionally, it's been about half an hour. Videos go up there. Yeah, How, what's that? Give it about half an hour, and it should be up on YouTube. Yeah, all right, and uh, yeah, thanks again, everybody. So, if this was helpful for you, the best thing that you can do is drop comments, ask more questions, also. Hit all the buttons, the like, the share, the tag your friends, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're here every day on social media and everywhere else that we can uh, to help you. So thanks a lot. Have a great night. And, uh, of course, go do something on purpose. Have a good night.